Moulay Idris Zerhoun, more often called simply Moulay Idris, is named for the first important Moroccan king who founded his empire in the 8th century on the site of the former Roman city of Belubulus, five kilometers away. This is a beautiful, charming town, unadulterated by tourism, tucked up against the Middle Atlas Mountains about 30 kilometers from the city of Meknes. I came here by bus from Meknes, which cost about 70 cents US and took about an hour. Well, I couldn't find a taxi when I got to town. And so, at least my luggage is riding a burro. I'm not sure if I am or not. I'm looking for my Hotel Dar Ines, and the gentleman said, it's not far. So, lucky me. Well, I managed to find the bus just fine from Meknes, and I thought that I'd made a huge mistake by getting off at the first bus stop. There must have been several because my bus continued up the hill. When I asked for a taxi, a kind gentleman said, well, there aren't any taxis around here, but I have what you need. And he went and signaled the burro owner, of which there were several, several burros stationed nearby. And that's when I was directed to my porter. That's a pretty fast burro. We pass through a plaza into a sort of interior walkway now between buildings and we're climbing. Still going into a rather typical Moroccan labyrinth. I'm sure when I get to the place they can try to explain to me how to get out. Look at the fabulous scene here as we've ascended. And we're here to Dar Yunus. I've never before arrived at a guest house with the help of a burro. Well, it is just a gorgeous late afternoon to try to climb to the top of this town for a marvelous view of the sunset. And since I'm looking at the weather forecast that it's supposed to be overcast tomorrow and the next day, this is the time to do it. To be honest with you, I have no idea how to get to the top of this town. And I spoke briefly by phone to the owner of the wonderful Riyadh that I'm, where I'm staying. And the first thing she said was, tomorrow, be happy to have someone show you how to get to the top. It sounded like a sort of a no vote of confidence in the foreigner's ability to find my way there. Walking in any of these streets, in any of these cities and towns that are of age in Morocco is not as simple as it would appear. It's just narrow alleyways everywhere. So I've decided not to enter the maze, at least initially. 
and follow an, a regular automobile street up as far as it will take me. There's always a way if you're determined to get somewhere and that's a way of introducing you to my new friend Mehdi, showing me the shortest way to get to a beautiful view. It's, uh, you know, in the history, is the first Islamic capital here in Morocco. When the Idrisids built the dynasty here, they needed a, a capital, so it was a good strategy to make it here on the top of the mountain. The population was totally different, like a huge difference between like those who came from, you know, from Saudi Arabia, from Hishaz to rule here and the, the, the natives, the natives were called Berbers here and they were speaking a very, very old language called Amazir and it has no similarities to, to the Arabic language so uh, wars, it means it mean wars like, We're talking about uh, the era of uh, Idris the first. Yeah, Idris the first, who came from Hejaz to here, and a lot of Berbers were, were on his side, so they made them Sultan. Sultan mean, means king. They left the city to build Fes, because Fes was built like uh, by uh, the second ruler. Idris the second. Yeah, the son of Idris the first. We're getting there. Yeah, this is the first one. Okay. And we have a second one right up there, and it's more beautiful than this one. It's so beautiful. Like a view. Okay, so point out the mosque. The mosque is, is right there. You, you, where the tower you enter, is. Yeah, where you enter. It's amazing, it's yeah, fabulous. Yeah. Pardon the rooster, or thank the rooster, I love the sound. There are two hills around which this beautiful town is built. I'm on the taller of the two hills, and you can see the lower hill behind me, and beyond, of course, the beautiful valley. It's a peaceful, calm, small town, a pleasurable place to linger. Sometimes one's best plan is to have no plan. Maybe just an intention, like getting to the top of a hill near sunset. There are no big fancy hotels here, but there are plenty of charming places to stay, including the Dar Innes, a restored mansion where I'm staying, owned by a husband and wife who are academics who live in Meknes. In the brief time I've been here, the guest list that they're in has included an ambassador of a West European country and his wife, as well as a Moroccan creative writers group in town to be inspired by its history and ambience. Idris I died here, was buried here, and his tomb is a pilgrimage site. That's Moulay Idris's claim to fame. I'm standing as close as I can get to the mosque that houses the tomb of King Idris I. You can see the distinctive Moroccan squared minaret tower rising in the background. Idris is considered a Muslim saint and therefore unlike many other mosques, this one that houses his tomb is restricted to those of the Islamic faith. Uh, Muslims make pilgrimages here often, especially during the month of August when there's a festival in his honor. While Idris and his son Idris II, who is entombed in Fez, are revered in Morocco, it wasn't always the case. The dynasty that succeeded them didn't look with favor on the idea of Muslim saints, and thus the special reverence given the tomb 
disappeared. It wasn't until the 14th century that yet another dynasty began anew to celebrate Idris' role in Moroccan history, and it's been that way ever since. In fact, successive Moroccan kings down to today have drawn legitimacy from doing so, especially considering that Idris I was a direct descendant of the Prophet Muhammad. Throughout Morocco, you will see mosque towers that differ architecturally from the traditional minarets found elsewhere in the Muslim world. Here they are square towers with a small cupola on top. I mentioned that in order to show you an exception, a cylindrical mosque, the only one of its kind in the country. This is the so-called Sentisi Mosque, built in 1939 by a local after his return from the Hajj in Mecca. And as you can see, it's covered with green tiles and has Arabic letters spelling out a surah, or chapter, of the Quran. I say so-called because it's no longer a mosque, but a madrasa, or religious school. If you come here, be forewarned. The cobble streets, most of them alleyways for pedestrians only, are crooked and steep, and uh, as such are easy to get lost in. On the bright side, you can always find plenty of friendly people to help you find your way, even if their second language is more likely to be French than English. I should point something out about language in Morocco generally. Arabic and Berber are the country's official languages. And while people here use traditional Arabic, they often speak a dialect that's referred to as Moroccan Arabic. And then, of course, because this was a French colony during the first half of the 20th century, there's a lot of French spoken here. So with many Moroccans, English is number four on the language list. Well, I've been to the top of the hill. It's my second time. These are extremely steep steps that serve this neighborhood from top to bottom. The people who live up here must uh, be in really good health because otherwise they wouldn't be able to sustain themselves climbing up and down these steep steps. People, of course, have been living on this spot with homes clinging to these hills for centuries. And all I can say is it must suit them. It's beautiful, but it's certainly not for everyone. I've come to another fork in the road, another series of steps that may or may not be taking me to the bottom. You take a look and decide what you think. There's no indication by any symbol on the wall that it's merely leading down to apartments or whether it's one of the main steps that leads to the town plaza. Whether I've walked myself down into a box canyon or whether there's a downward outlet. I'm betting on the latter, and I sure hope so. The short story is, I'm toast. This alleyway led me down to a dead end. There are just two apartment doors. One of the apartments has a football game, a soccer game going. So I'm now proceeding back up, and I'll see if I can find my way out of this maze. Bonjour. Go français? Go français? No, United States. English. American. English? English. Oui. Do you speak English? No. Do you speak? Oui. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Do you speak French? No. Oui, it's my sister. 
Yeah. What's your name? We are Ines. Ines? We are Malak. Malak. Ah, beautiful name. We. Yeah, yeah. Well, nice to meet you. We. Well, I just sat down to have a chicken sandwich as a snack in the mid-afternoon here at an outdoor restaurant on, I started to say the town square, it isn't really a square, it's very unusually shaped. It sort of twists around in something like a crescent moon shape. Shops on either side until it gradually widens at the top. So I can sit here and enjoy the beautiful view and the gorgeous olive trees on the mountains and the buildings overhead. Quite a kaleidoscope of life, I would say. 